Hi, I'm Nick Bonner for treestuff.com, and today we're going to cover several different ways to store rope. Uh, first thing you're going to do is make sure you have your rope and that it's on the ground in front of you. Um, when you go to set your coil, you're going to set the length of the coil a little bit longer than this tail. So uh, you want it to be a comfortable amount. So uh, this looks good to me. I'm going to reach out and grab slack with my other hand and then bring it over and set it into my hand. And this looks pretty simple, but what I'm, there's actually a few things going on here. So when I grab it with my left hand, I am twisting it, and I'll exaggerate that a little here, to make it lay in nice and neat. And then I am adjusting the length of the coil by either pushing or pulling on the rope, depending on uh, how close I got to where I wanted it to be. And you see this rope is a, a little twisted or hockled, so some of these times I have to add an extra twist in to get it to lay uh, nice and neat, which, you know, ropes twisting, I think, is kind of a, just a fact of life. So uh, we'll speed through this a little bit here. If the rope starts to get heavy, you can set it on your forearm and reduce the amount of leverage uh, that it's exerting on your arm. So it's easier to hold, but you do want to make sure that you grab the last coil you did so that when you pull, you don't uh, miss size it accidentally. Uh, once you've got a little bit more than a body length of rope left, uh, what you're going to do is take it and you're going to swing the rope around this hand, grab it, and then pull it tight and do that again and make sure that this time you come above the, the last wrap that you did. You can do that a couple of times to get it locked nice and tight. Swing the rope between your leg and remove your hand that was holding those coils. And here, you can just kind of hand dress in a few wraps, keeping an eye on how much slack you have remaining, because you're going to use this to lock it off. And the way you'll do that is reach your hand back through, grab it, and pull a bite through. Flip that bite over the whole coil, and then pull it tight. And here, you can just go ahead and hang the rope like this, or if you want, you can send a bite back through, come over the top, send a bite through there, pull that tight, and then just close it with a little half hitch there. And that's going to give you a handle to hang the rope on. If you want to go ahead and put your rope in a bag, uh, one of the first ways to do it is to start with your rope uh, a little bit away from you, so you don't want it necessarily directly in front of you. Go ahead, drop the tail in, uh, and then just pull the rope into the bag. Uh, you know, this can be difficult depending on the size of the rope or the size of the bag. If the bag doesn't stand upright, sometimes, you know, you'll see people doing this. Another way to do it is to simply turn, pull it over your shoulder. So you'll want to put it, you don't want it on this inside shoulder to kind of where the rope was coming from. Uh, and this is a, a good way to do it uh, right here nice and fast, and you get it into the bag. Uh, if you don't like doing that, another way that you can do it um, is to take the rope over a limb or over a ladder on your truck, or you can hang it from a carabiner or something like that, and quickly just dispense it right into the bag. When a rope uh, is in a bag. One of the, not only is it easier, I think, to put this rope into the bag this way than it is to coil it, but it's always going to come right out of the bag really easily. So um, because it's not going to tie itself in a knot, you can store the end of the rope uh, simply like this. And then, you know, really no matter how you treat this, right, it's going to come out uh, nice and easily no matter what. So if whether it's a climbing line or a rigging line, when you go to pull it out of the bag, you're not going to get any tangles or knots or anything like that. Uh, it makes your rope more portable if you haven't used all of the rope, but you want to move the remainder over to here or maybe here. You can do that uh, pretty easily. And then just continue pulling your rope tangle free right out of the bag. Uh, assuming that it's safe to do so, I would recommend taking your helmet off before you go to shoulder coil a rope. Uh, it can make it a little bit easier. 
Um, when you go to shoulder coil a rope, you are gonna take the rope, make sure it's on the ground in front of you, obviously, uh, and you're gonna spread your hands above uh, your head and around your shoulder and like this, and set kind of the first loop across your shoulder. Then with your left hand, you'll grab on the, the running side of the rope and do the same thing. And then repeat that process with your other hand. So you're alternating which hand is pulling. And this can be useful, especially when you're coiling a very long rope um, or a very heavy rope, because the weight of holding it is on my shoulders and my neck versus on uh, my forearm or my bicep uh, holding out like a hand coil like we show in, a, in another video. So um, this is, uh, it's also quite fast uh, because you're pulling a full arm's length of rope each time and because you're alternating back and forth, you're able to pick the rope up quite quick. Um, when you have a little bit more than a body length of rope left, what you're gonna do is hold it over your forearm and then close it like you would close a hand coil. And you'll do that by swinging the rope around, grabbing it with your hand inside here, doing the same thing, making sure, just like with a hand coil, that you come over the top, and then you'll close it just like you close a hand coil. Uh, why don't we coil all our ropes like this? Well, some people do, so they think that's, that's worth knowing. Um, one of the reasons that I don't coil every rope with a shoulder coil, uh, even though it's really fast um, and easier on my arms, is because it's a, a little messier. The coil, uh, after you've closed it, like this, um, usually ends up a little bit longer than with a hand coil. And because the loops are doubled, uh, it has a, just a little bit more likelihood to get tangled. And then when you go to lay this out on the ground, so you remove your half hitch, pull this out, pull this over, you bail all these off. Now you have kind of a longer rope and you just need to take a little more care when you set this out uh, to, to make sure, see I, I did it wrong there. And uh, you just have to take a little more care to make sure that it doesn't get tangled. But uh, that is how to shoulder coil a rope from treestuff.com. Thanks for watching.